Good morning. We're going to look at some trigonometry today, looking at something called the law of sines. And what we're trying to do is, um, well, most of trigonometry has been about right angled triangles so far, where we can use Pythagorean theorem and we can use these lovely trig identities to figure out all the different sides and all the different angles, etc. But now, what if we look at a non right triangle? And obviously, non right triangles show up a lot in the real world. Here's just an example that that I got from the book. Again, we're using OpenStax Algebra and Trigonometry textbook. And uh, so you have two satellites pointed up at a plane and the satellites are 20 miles apart. And the signal from one satellite to the plane is 15 degrees and the other one is 35 degrees. And so from that, can we figure out this value? Can we figure out the altitude of the plane? Can we figure out how high up it is? All right, so we would have to be able to solve this triangle in order to do that, in order to figure out the height. Um, but this is not a right triangle. So what do we do? All right, so um, there are different techniques to solving non-right triangles. I'm going to show you three of them, or I'm going to show you three cases that all use the same technique. And so today we're looking at these cases, ASA, AAS, and SSA. And what this is referring to is the information that they give us at the beginning of the question. Okay, so what you know about the question, what do you know about the triangle already? This ASA means angle side angle. Okay, so we know, let me draw a triangle real quick. We have some sort of triangle, um, let me see, something like this. And what we know is an angle a side and an angle. So we know an angle, a side, and an angle in that order. And from that, we can solve the triangle using the law of sines. Okay, the second one and the third one you can figure out. We have angle, uh, angle, side. And then we have side, side, angle. All right, so in these cases, we can use law of sines. And um, let me draw some pictures of those real quick. So again, let's do another triangle here for angle, side, angle. So here I know angle, angle, side. That's what I meant to say, AAS, angle, angle, side, in that order. And then the last one, SSA, um, actually is, we have to be a little careful, because let, let me show you something. Let me uh, let me do a better job of this. So here, this time we know side. Oh, we so said we know that side, that side, and then we know an angle here, like that. The problem is though, is this may not create a unique triangle. Look, I can keep that same. Um, I'm sorry, I messed this up. That's not illustrating what I wanted. Let me try this again. Okay, so we have, well, let me let me draw what I'm trying to draw and we'll see where we're messing up. Yeah, okay, so here we have this angle, that side, and that side, that's what we know. And the thing is, I could have that same side length like this with the same angle and actually have a separate triangle with the same side length, it's still the same SSA triangle. So this uh, this case could be, this is what we call the ambiguous case of side-side angle. And we'll try to clarify when that happens, okay? So again, here you have angle, side, side. You could have one of two triangles, potentially, with the side side angle case. All right, so we need to be kind of careful with that um, and we'll be mindful of it. So what I recommend when you're doing this is to first identify what kind of case you're looking at because that'll help you figure out, first of all, can law of signs work? And if it can, does it fall into this side side angle category that can be kind of tricky? We have an ambiguous case potentially. All right. Now, um, before we actually solve any of these, let's let's introduce the most powerful tool that we're going to use today to help us figure them out, and this is Law of Sines. 
So we know that triangles have a lot of proportionality to them. Um, what I mean is you can have these congruent triangles that if they have the same angles, you can grow them and shrink them and they'll keep the same proportions. Well, there's something underlying all triangles in a powerful way similar to that, and it's this. So if you have a triangle, let me draw a triangle here, and let's have si uh, angles A, B, and C, and then side lengths, little a, little b, and little c, and the ordering does matter here. I want side b to be opposite angle b, right? Does that make sense? Side a is opposite angle a. Then what I can say from the law of sines here is that sine of angle a divided by the side of a, that fraction is the same as the sine of b divided by little b and the sine of c divided by little c. You have this proportionality within a triangle itself, which is simply incredible, right? So you have the sine a over a, sine b over b, sine c over c, they're all the same. Or sometimes it's useful to look at the reciprocal version of that, which is not any, really say anything new. We're just taking the reciprocal of everything. And so we're stating it again as the law of sines. And that way, uh, if we need to quickly reference either one of these, we have them. Okay. So this is the tool we're going to use to solve a triangle. And I hope that makes sense. Um, it comes down just to proportionality. And we'll use, use some, we'll use these a lot today in some examples. Okay. So let's look at example one. And here's what we want to do. We want to solve the triangle. And so you could say it like this. I like to say it like this. Solve triangle ABC. And let's get a picture. The picture we want looks something kind of like this. And it's okay if our angles get off the common angles that we know with trigonometry because you will need a calculator for this section more often than not. All right, so here I have an angle here, 50, 50 degrees, and this is angle A. We have angle B up here, angle C over here. All right, this side is 10, and what side would that be? That side is A, okay? We know that side C is 30 degrees. I mean, I'm sorry, angle C is 30 degrees. And then we don't know side B, side C, or angle B. So what I like to do is at the beginning, and the book doesn't do this, but I like doing this, is just making a list of all the pieces of this cat of this triangle. All right, so I have my three angles, I have my three sides, and so when it says solve the triangle, it means give me all the information. Give me all the sides, all the angles. So I know that angle A is 50 degrees, and I know that angle C is 30 degrees, Okay, and I know, what else I know? I know side A is 10. Okay, and then I have to fill in the blanks for the rest of it to complete this question. Okay, so the uh, low-hanging fruit here would be what? Angle B, all right, that's exactly right. Why? Because I know that angle B plus A and C equals 180 degrees. Okay, so I know angle B is gonna be 180 degrees minus the sum of my two other angles, right? And let's see, so that's 180 degrees minus 80. We get B is 100 degrees. So we got the angles taken care of, not a problem. Now we just gotta figure out how to get the sides. And so what we're gonna do is use the law of sines. So for example, if I'm trying to solve for side C, I'm trying to solve for side C, then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna pick what I know, which is, what do I know? I, the only side I know is A, so I'm gonna use A. I'm gonna say that sine A over little a is the same thing as sine C over little c, right? And I actually could do this in an easier way. Let's, let's erase this. Why don't we start with what we don't know or what we're trying to solve for, little c over sine c is the same as little a over sine a, 
Okay, and I know three parts of this equation. And I'm going to go ahead and do some algebra ahead of time just to save me a little bit of time here. That's going to be sine c times a over sine a. If I multiply both sides of the equation by sine c. Okay, so then now I can plug in everything. I know that uh, sine c, that's sine of 30 degrees, which is actually something we know um, without a calculator. And then we have side a is 10, and then angle a is 50, so we have over 50 degrees there. Okay, and then from here, we just um, basically turn to a calculator if we and make sure that we're in degrees, and you should get about 6.5 for side c. Okay, and you want to make sure you can get that yourself. So go through the calculations and make sure it works. And so there we have side C at 6.5. And now we guys got to figure out um, B. And how do we do B? The same way we did C, okay? The exact same way. In fact, um, we're going to say B over sine B equals A over sine A. And I've had students in the past say, could we use uh, C over sine C there? Yes, you could, but uh, I don't recommend it here because my value for side C is an approximation, right? I have the squiggly equals for 6.5. That's an approximate, not an exact. And so I would recommend sticking with the exact values, which would be the A's, side A and angle A. All right, so I'm going to use some algebra first just to make my work a little easier on me. So that's sine B times sine A, I mean A over sine A. So then we have sine of 100 degrees times 10 over sine of 50 degrees. And again, we use our calculator and we are very careful and we'll get around 12.9. Okay, so now we have our answers. And we calculated those here, here, and here, and we have solved the triangle. All right, and what I didn't mention here at the beginning is what case is this? So let's highlight what we know. We know this, we know angle, we know an angle, and we know a side. And let's look at our cases we had at the beginning. Angle, angle, side. That's one of our law of sine cases, and this is how we do it. Okay, so what I would recommend at the beginning, and I should have done this, is I would put out here the side this is angle, angle, side. And the reason I would do that is because it tips me off to the strategy that we need to apply here. Um, I knew instantly, if I had identified this as angle, angle, side, I would know instantly that this is a case for law of signs. Okay, now all the questions in this section are law of signs, but in general they're not. Okay, um, so let's look at the tricky case, the side, side, angle. Let's look at side, side, angle. So we're going to look at example two. And uh, well, actually, before that, let me show you this. So let's say on side side angle. And I tried to draw some pictures earlier to show that with side side angle, I could actually have two triangles with the same given information. OK, and let me show you. There's actually more to it. We actually have four cases that we could have. And so the first one. Um, looks something like this. You don't have you don't have a real triangle. Okay, you're giving again. You're given this side. We'll call that A. You're given this side B, and then you're given this side here or this angle here, angle A. And we have no um, triangle. Okay, so we we could have no triangle here. And if you let uh, the straight perpendicular be the height of the triangle, h. This case happens when your a value is less than the height, h. Okay, the next thing we could have is, and this would probably be actually the best case, we get uh, a right triangle. And this actually be, becomes a right triangle. All right, now when does that happen? That happens in the case when a is exactly the height of the triangle, case or what we're about to see. Okay, so this is, so we have no triangle, right triangle. The last case is two triangles. And this happens when your A value 
is actually less than your height. And so it looks something like this. You could have a triangle like this. Okay, and so we're given, here's A, we're given B, and then angle A, and we could have that. Now imagine that there was no bottom side here, and that this was like a door hinge, and you could rotate it around over here until it hit the same um, in the y direction, and that's how you get your second triangle. All right, so what I'm saying is, imagine that if you had taken this and rotated it around over here, so that the same side A comes down and hits right there. That's the same side B, we have the same side A, and we have the same, uh, the same angle A, and we have the same side little a. Okay, and then what had happened was we had rotated from this triangle over to that triangle, right, if that, if that makes any sense. Okay, and so we'll have to be careful with this. This is the, I said four cases because I was looking at four triangles. There's actually three cases, and here they are. All right, so you can either have one no triangle, two a right triangle, or three two triangles. Okay. Um, and actually, there is a fourth case, right? We could, there are some instances where you have exactly one triangle as well. So, um, how would that be possible? Well, if your side A is too long to actually make an obtuse triangle, you could have, let's start four cases again. And so, four is if you had one triangle. And let me see if I can figure out uh, a picture what that looks like. So it, it looks something kind of like what we had, but here my angle A, what I want this time is that angle A is the long the long side between A and B. Now if that's the case, and so I'm given side A, little side B, and angle A. If that's the case, then notice if I try to rotate this long side over, it's not going to work. It's not going to make a second triangle. It doesn't work that way. Okay. So this is the case where we have one triangle. And how does this happen? If A is greater than or equal to that side B. Okay, and so this is the one triangle case. So you see why side side angle requires a little bit of attention because, I mean, a lot can happen. This is why we call it the ambiguous case. All right, so let's look at an example and see if we can figure out um, how to solve this thing, okay? So this is example two. We want to solve triangle ABC, and here our triangle looks something like this. Okay, now this is just a drawing, right? This um, this may generate a second triangle, we'll have to see. So this is angle A, which is 35 degrees. Here is uh, angle B, and here is angle C. All right, and we know that side A is 6 and side B is 8. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and write A, B, C, and then little a, little b, and little c. We know little a is 35 degrees, little, I mean uh, angle A, little a is 6, little b is 8, okay? We don't know two of the angles, and we don't know one of the sides. And is this really side-side angle? So let's see, we have a side, a side, and an angle. This is side-side angle. And if you ever, if you encounter this in your homework or in real life somewhere, you need to throw up an, an exclamation mark because this is the arbitrary case. We might have a second triangle here, okay? All right, so what are we gonna do? Well, um, we could easily solve for angle B because we have side B and we could use the law of sines. So again, I'm trying to solve for, what am I solving for? Angle B, so I'm going to say sine B over little b equals sine A over little a, which means that sine B is the same thing as B times sine A over little a, right? I just plugged in some algebra there. And so now I multiply 8 times sine of 35 degrees divided by 6, like that. Okay, and when I do that, um, I'm going to have to, well, how do I get sine from this? I'm going to have to apply um, 
some sort of inverse function. All right, so when I when I take sine b of this, I get 0 0.7648, and this is an approximate, an approximation. It's approximate because of sine 35 degrees, and so then I'm going to have then that um, b equals the inverse sine of that value, 648. All right, and let's think for a moment. Well, let's see what we get first. We get about 49.9 degrees, and so that's what we're going to write down for B, 49.9 degrees. Now, let's think for a second. If you remember, sine inverse, let me come over here on the side, sine inverse of a fraction, we'll call it X, um, can only give us angles from quadrants 4 and 1. So we're either in quadrant four or quad, uh, quadrant four or quadrant one. In particular, if it's a positive angle, it's going to be from quadrant one, right? So like sine inverse of one half, for example, we get the quadrant one value for that 30 degrees. Okay, so when I had a positive value here, I knew instantly that this was going to be a quadrant one angle. Okay, but here's the problem. Notice when I have two triangles, I have this this angle that changes right here. That's the angle that changes. In in the first one, or let's say in the second one, that's a quadrant one angle. That's less than 90 degrees. It's a quadrant one angle. Over here though, it's larger than 90 degrees, which takes it from outside of quadrant one possibly a quadrant two. It have to be quadrant two, right? Because it can't be bigger than 180 degrees either. So this is a quadrant two angle there. Okay, and so when I'm taking sine inverse, the only angle that I'll get, we'll say comes from sine inverse, will be a quadrant one angle. So how do I find out the quadrant two angle? I have to use a reference angle. So this angle has a uses a Q1 reference angle. And do you remember how to do that? Let's see, here's my graph. I have an angle in quadrant two. So my reference angle is right there and that is the sine inverse x, and the way I find my angle, the purple angle here, would be by saying the uh, reference angle, 180 degrees minus whatever my reference angle is, which I'll call theta prime here. So to find the second triangle, what I have to do is take my quadrant one angle and say 180 minus, okay? Now, sometimes that won't work. All right, let's just check, let's check. Okay, so let me make a note. At this point, I'm gonna say, is there a second triangle? And the way I test this is by saying 180 minus 49.9 degrees, okay? And that will be Um, let me see. That would be about well, let's see. Yeah, sorry. That's about a hundred and thirty point one degrees, right? Yeah, sorry. Okay, so is that possible? Well, um, let's think for a moment. What do I know already? I know angle A is 35. So if I had a 35 degree angle and a 130.1 degree angle, so we can say, does this fit with angle A? All right, so sometimes this 130.1 will be too large to actually fit with the angle that we already knew. Let's suppose that angle A was 50 degrees. 
then I can't have a triangle that has a 50 degree angle and a 130.1 degree angle and a third angle, right? That's too big. And so that would be the case where we have this fourth case where we only have one triangle, okay? But I think this is gonna work because I can say 130.1 plus 35, well, let's say 180 degrees minus that, and I think I can actually get another angle, and I do, I get 14.9 uh, degrees. So it does work. And so here, what I'm saying is, look, this is my, this was my uh, my second angle B. This is like B2 for the second triangle. That's angle A. And so this would give me a potential second angle that actually works. Okay, so I need to change this a little bit. I need to say this is B1, C1, and little c1. And then we also need to figure out um, B2, C2, and little c2 for a second triangle. And we've actually figured out part of it. Let's see, we just figured out that um, the big angle, B2, would be 130.1 degrees. And then we said the little angle, C2, is going to be 14.9 degrees. Okay, so that's what we know. We've actually almost solved for uh, triangle, uh, triangle 2. What about triangle 1? So we can come back and figure out once I had that B, this is B1 now, is 49.9 degrees. I could say here that, um, so going back to this one, C1 then is 180 minus the 49.9 degrees plus 35 degrees, right? And again, that is your B1 and your A. And so when I do that, I should get my C1 angle and that should be um, about 95.1 degrees. And so there's my C1 angle. All right, so let's write that up. Okay, now that is confusing. That can be confusing for a lot of people. So let's trace through it one more time and see if this makes sense, okay? So we were trying to solve for this what we thought was one triangle. And by doing that, we use law of sines and when I use sine inverse, I ended up with 49.9 degrees. Now, if you just look at my picture and you look at this angle here, does that look possibly like 49.9 degrees? I mean, that is an obtuse angle, which means it's bigger than 90 degrees. That's not possible. All right, so what was going on? Well, remember, this is why we said, look, sine x only comes from quadrant one or quadrant four. So when I use sine inverse of this angle here, and got 49.9 degrees, that's a quadrant one angle. Okay, so that means that it looks kind of like this, this triangle here, where I have a quadrant one angle that I just found, but we need this big angle, which would be a quadrant two angle. How can I figure out if it's a quadrant two angle, I mean the quadrant two angle, just say 180 minus your quadrant one angle. So in other words, I took, so for this angle, I wrote, I had 49.9 degrees, that came from sine inverse. Now if I say 180 minus that, I get potentially my second angle, which is 130 degrees, 130.1 degrees. From there, we needed to test does it actually work, and it actually did. We could actually make a second triangle that worked. If it was too big, so um, let's say, if C2 is less than zero, there's no second triangle, right? You can't have a negative angle there. So if it was too big, it would have forced C2 to be negative, which wasn't work. This actually did work. My um, So now I have C2 to be 14.9, and I can go back and find C1 to be 95.1. And what you're looking at is exactly like this situation. And in this case, this would actually be my first triangle. This would actually be my um, triangle one, and this one here would be my triangle two. Okay, so that's what we're looking at. Uh, now we just gotta figure out the sides. Okay, so let's use, let's go with C1. Let's find little c1. And I can use the law of sines to find it. And from here on out, it's pretty straightforward. We've done all the hard part. Okay, so c1, 
little c1 over sine of c1 equals, let's use, how about, um, what do we know? Let's use a and sine a, which means that little c1 equals sine c1 times a over sine a. And so then we can just plug in our information, which we've done a few times now. And you should be able to get that your little c1 is um, about 10.4. Okay, and so again, um, well, why don't we go ahead and plug in our information? Why, I don't know why we skipped that. Uh, so c1 is 95. We had sine of 95.1 degrees. Little a was uh, 6. Sine a was, what was it, 35. So when you do all, plug all this in, you should get about 10.4. So there we have solved triangle one, and now we just need to solve triangle two. And so the way we solve triangle two is the exact same thing. C2 over sine C2 using the law of sines. And the funny thing is, is I can still use a and sine a, which is the same for both of them. So what I'm gonna get, just follow my calculations from above, I'm gonna have sine of, instead of 95.1, we had what, we had 14.9 times six over sine of 35 degrees. And when I do that, I should get approximately 2.7. So there is my second triangle, 2.7. That can be confusing, I know. Um, you just gotta look over it again and again and again. Okay, so we have two triangles. And, and why don't I go ahead and write, just for clarity, the second triangle looks like this. A is 35 degrees, little a is six, B is eight. Okay, so we ended up with, um, and this actually was the triangle that we drew. That's triangle two, and we'll call this one triangle one. And triangle one looks more like looks more like this. Okay, and uh, here's, here's A, here is B2, uh, I'm sorry, B1, and here's C1, like that. Okay, and so we have 8, 6, and 10.4. Uh, Over here we had 8, 6, and this is down here is our 2.7 that we didn't know at the time. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Um, there's a lot of arrows going around. Just follow through it again, trace through it as you need. Uh, that is the trickiest case for sure. Side side angle is the tricky case. Um, how would I have known if I only had one triangle? Where would it have fallen apart? Is right here. If C2 had been negative, there's only one triangle. Okay, we only get one triangle. Great. Okay. Um, so what did we do? We just did a side side angle and we did uh, an angle angle side. What about angle side angle? Angle side angle is very similar to angle angle side and um, it's not really a big deal. Just use law of signs just like we've been doing and it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Okay, um, so let's look at this one. I'm gonna go to example four in the text. And example four says this, we wanna find all triangles with, um, I'm just gonna put some letters on here, little a being four, angle a being 50 degrees, and little b is 10. Okay, so let's see if we can get a picture of this. Let's get a picture. And um, let's see, we have angle A is 50 degrees. So the opposite of that is four, and this side is 10. And we wanna solve the triangles for, we wanna solve this triangle, okay. So we're gonna say A, B, C, little a, little b, little c. Um, again, little a was four. 
angle is 50 degrees and little b is 10. So there's two angles I'm missing and a third side. What's, what case is this? Side, side, angle, not again, please no. Okay, so um, well, let's go ahead and solve um, for another side, I, I mean for another angle. I guess we're going to look at B. We're going to solve sine B over B to be uh, the same, that's the same as sine A over A, and that's the power of law of sines. So that means that sine B equals B times sine A over A. Hopefully this is only one triangle, right? And just plugging in for my information. Okay, so I get 10 fourths times sine 50 degrees, and you get approximately 1.19 uh, 1.915 and at this point this is actually good news for us because we're saying sine of an angle is close to 2. Now if you remember what is the um, range of sine? Sine can't go above 1 so this is not possible. I can't take sine of an angle and get 1.9 so here, there is no such triangle. The information they gave me is not realistic. My picture is not a good picture. There is no such triangle. The, the picture looks more like this. Okay, here's the 4, here's the 10, here's the 50 degree angle, and the triangle is not realistic. Okay, so, so we actually came out on top here. Good. I hope that makes sense. Okay, um, let me show you another thing. Now, the last thing that we would that we're going to look at in this section is using sine to calculate area of a triangle. Okay, so using the sine function, I guess since we're talking about law of sines, we should throw in this as well. The using sine to find area, and the idea is that the area of the triangle, remember the area of a triangle is one half base times height. Well, the height can actually be written as an expression of sine. And so it can look, and once you simplify, you end up with this. You end up with one half BC sine A. Okay, so you, you say one half to the sides multiplied together times sine of the third angle. Um, or you could rewrite it a b sine c or how about um, a c sine b those are all calculating the area of the triangle okay so for example example five find the area of a triangle here um, a is 90 b is 52 and angle C is 102 degrees. Okay, so I mean they gave us the information. We don't even need to draw a picture here, right? I know then the area is going to be well AB sine C. So that's just 90 times 52 times sine of 102 degrees. And then from there, I'm just careful in my calculations. I need to put it in the calculator you should get approximately 2,289. We don't know what our measurements are, so we can just say square units. If this was feet, it'd be square feet, you know, etc. All right, I hope that makes sense, guys. Um, this is not too bad, other than the arbitrary case of sine, right, when we have the side sine angle. But once you see it, you'll see it. It'll make sense to you. Um, other than that, the rest of it's not too difficult. All right, guys, listen, if you have any questions for me, let me know. I'd be glad to help. I hope you guys are doing well. Um, next week, we're going to go over section 10.2, which is going to be our last section for this course. And um, if you have any questions for me, again, please let me know. I want to help where I can. Hope you're having a good day, a good week, and are staying healthy. And I guess we'll see you next week. Take care.